The New York Post, we uh, know all about the powers that be trying to shut us down and censor us. It was 13 months ago that we published uh, the first of our bombshell stories that came from Hunter Biden's laptop. Um, this story was on the front page, uh, October 13, and it was titled Biden Secret Emails. And it detailed an email from one of Hunter's business partners, a Ukrainian businessman, Vadim Pozarsky, thanking him for the meeting with Joe Biden, who was then vice president in Washington. Now, this um, was important because Joe Biden had been telling journalists throughout the campaign that he knew nothing about his son's overseas business dealings. So A, it showed that he was lying. And B, we also know that uh, just months after this meeting in Washington with the Burisma executive of uh, this Ukrainian corrupt energy company that was paying Hunter Biden $83,333 a month to, to sit on its board, even though he had no expertise, and which after Joe Biden ceased become, being vice president, they cut Hunter Biden's pay in half. So it's pretty obvious it was a quid pro quo. But months after this meeting in Washington that Joe Biden denied and that we put on the front page, he went to Kiev, he was the vice president, he went to Kiev and he threatened the government there uh, that he would withhold a billion dollars in aid, in US aid to Ukraine, which they desperately needed. Um, he said he was doing it uh, because he wanted them to fire their chief prosecutor, a man called Viktor Shokin. Now, what you don't know and what the New York Times and Washington Post and the rest of the media in this country never reported was that Viktor Shokin at that time was uh, investigating Hunter Biden's boss at Burisma, the owner of Burisma, a, an oligarch named Zlachevsky. And a few days before Joe Biden made this threat, Viktor Shokin had moved to seize all of this Burisma owner's property all his mansions in Kiev, even his Rolls-Royce Silver Phantom. Um, all his property was seized. This was a, a current and serious investigation that was on foot. And yet the story that you will hear from Joe Biden and from his media allies is that no, Viktor Shokin was doing nothing about corruption in Ukraine, that he wasn't investigating anybody at Burisma, that he himself was a corrupt prosecutor. And that was why Joe Biden, because Joe Biden cares so much about corruption, had threatened the government. And they made him, they made, he made the government fire Viktor Shokin. Um, he learned how to cook crack um, over the, the four burner stove on, in, the, um, in the bungalow at the chateau. And he would photograph that. He was very proud of his prowess with the crack cooking and uh, he would have little baggies with his little pieces of crack inside it and he would weigh them on a little Cheech and Chong scale and take photographs of that. So this is someone who would either be on benders or then he would go into very expensive rehabs um, and this was just a cycle that he would live in. And um, I mean, one of these rehabs, I mean, all these rehabs seemed to be a joke. They didn't really do anything for him. They were just sort of a, a pampering time for him. But he, um, one, one rehab that he did in um, Newburyport port in um, Massachusetts had, um, he, he would, during the day, he would get these intravenous infusions of a drug called ketamine, which is a horse tranquilizer, And it's also a party drug. But he would spend the days getting this drug coursing through his system. It was supposed to somehow, you know, stop addiction. And at night, he would go back to his lodgings and he would invite over prostitutes and drug dealers and smoke crack all night. So I don't really think his rehab, he took it very seriously. Um, so the reason it's important, though, to address that before you get to the corruption is because... Um, this is not somebody who could hold down a job at McDonald's. You know, this is not um, a high-powered international businessman who's capable of flying around the world doing billion-dollar deals because of the genius of his entrepreneurship. Uh, this is someone who was introduced into the very inner sanctum 
of not just President Xi Jinping in China, but of Vladimir Putin in Russia. He was also in the inner sanctum of oligarchs across the world, um, you know, from Romania, from um, Ukraine, um, from Kazakhstan. And he, um, he would fly to Lake Como or Monte Carlo to meet these. These are the playgrounds of the oligarchs. And he would hang out with them. Um, and so that was his bizarre life. One, one time his business partner, Devin Archer, described themselves as like something out of Jason Bourne, that he, they saw themselves as living this sort of James Bond lifestyle, meeting what Devin Archer called the Garks at Lake Como, um, the oligarchs. So this person is the president's most trusted advisor. I mean, currently, he's in and out of the White House. He's in and out of the long weekend White House in Delaware. Um, Biden, just on Wednesday, Joe Biden, the president, um, he gave a eulogy in Delaware and he said that he took Hunter's advice before doing a climate deal with China. He said Hunter advised him to use empathy 